Okay, welcome to another session for instrumental music. Today we're doing the clarinet. We've already done a basic lesson. First steps on the clarinet. We're just going to go over a few steps in that. And today we're going to be learning our first band notes on the clarinet. E, D and C to play some tunes by the end of the lesson. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to successfully play a tune on the clarinet, some simple tunes with our first three band notes. Okay, so what we've previously done, we've learned to uh, put our reed on the instrument with on the barrel. I always like to do it on the barrel, it gives you something to hold. And also when you're putting on the instrument, uh, you don't accidentally knock the ligature off. We've learned how to put the reed on so that it's, whoops, where is it? Just the right height. So it's not sticking over too much. Maybe that's a little bit too high. So just uh, the right height. We've also learned to blow it. Nice tight corners, flat chin, ski jump, ski jump chin to have a good omisha. That's your band face, okay? Not puffing up like that. So I'll just pop that on and then we'll go over the home keys again. We talked about the home keys in our first steps lesson. So we're going to go over the home keys again. Right hand holds the weight of the instrument under the thumb rest there. Now we're going to have a look at our left hand on the back. That's where our thumb goes. Nest it in there. First finger here, second on the next ring, push it down, hold it down, and the third finger just on the hole there. There's no key there, just the hole, okay? First finger, second finger, third finger. The right hand, we won't be using the right hand for keys today, but I'll show them anyhow. Home keys, two, three, and the little finger's got all these guys to do, okay? So on the clarinet and a few other instruments, a lot of the problems arise when you're playing when the tone's not coming out properly. Is when your key, when your fingers are maybe not on the on the key properly. Look at the middle finger there. See how it's not on the ring. If you try to play a note with this finger down, this finger, and this finger, and the keys are not covered properly, you'll get a funny note in between because the sound, the air, will be coming out of that hole there. So we've got to really make sure that our fingers covering the holes. I like to nest my fingers in. I wiggle them a bit backwards, forwards, and then you can feel where they are. And they get little little dots on them where the keys are. You don't have to push hard. It's more like just wiggling them, wiggle the thumb, and also not to accidentally hit hit these side keys. See how it opens up a whole way up there? We don't want that open, okay? So that'll be the main problems when we're um, learning to play these uh, clarinet and saxophone and flute and thing, is to get the keys on the right holes, but also not to have them on the wrong ones, okay? And accidentally hit maybe these side ones. That can happen a lot. So if you get a squeaky note coming out, you could just be accidentally resting your finger there to hold the clarinet, okay? And then it opens up. They open up all these holes there and cause all sorts of problems. Okay, so now we're going to go through those first three band notes that I just mentioned. We're going to start with E. E is on the bottom line of the stave. If the stave has five lines, like my five fingers, short, short thumb, we, we have our saying, every good boy deserves fruit. Okay, E, G, B, D. F lines, that's the lines. This this line is down the bottom, okay? E, just down the bottom, E. This is the fingering for E. It'll come up on your screen in a sec. It's just the first finger and the thumb. Push them down, hold them down, wiggle them so that they cover the holes properly. That's your E. Have a go at that, E. Okay, the next note we're going to play is one note below E on the stave, so it's not 
on the line, like the E. It's just hanging below it. And in the alphabet, what's before E in the alphabet? D. Okay. So we're doing D now. Thumb. First finger. Second finger. That's D. Two fingers down. Push them down. Hold them down on the home keys. Wiggle them. Make sure you don't accidentally hit other keys with the with the side of your finger here. D. Have a go at D. Now we're going to do our next note. What's before D in the alphabet? C. Okay, so we've got our five lines. Every good boy deserves fruit. And we're going down. We've just had E. We've just had D, which sits below the stave. And then we've got another line down here. We have to put a line through it called the ledger line because we've run out of lines. So we just put extra ones in when we need them. It's a C. E, D, C. Hangs down there. It'll be up on your screen. Make more sense then. Can anyone guess the fingering for that? Thumb. So we're making the tube longer where the holes are closed. So it'll make the notes deeper. Okay, if we keep closing the notes, it makes the tube longer where the sound comes out and uh, makes them lower. So we're up to three notes here. Push them down, hold them down, wiggle them about so that they close the keys. Don't hit the side ones anywhere. There we have C. So now there's going to be a piece coming up for you. Um, it's going to have a few little notes in it to do. I'll play it through a few times just to give you a few chances to practice it. Um, I would suggest the first time it comes up is to pause the video, have a look at the notes, and then play it again to play through. The first time through, I'll have the fingering up each time the new note comes up to help you a bit, but not for the uh, following times. So play this passage for you a few times. Uh, through a few times and see how you go. How'd you go with that one? All right, now we've got another one coming up, Band on Parade. Um, it's number seven, maybe you're using a different book and it's not called that, but just have a go at the one on the screen. Um, this one, notes in a slightly different order, but same procedure. So the notes are one bar long, that's four counts long. So you have to hold them for the whole bar. Ta. The next bar is a rest of also four counts, because that's how many beats we have a bar. 
So you rest, 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 play. Okay, here you go, number seven. How'd you go with that one? All right, we've got another one coming up. Uh, number nine, no, number 11, half the price. Number 11, half the price. This one's a little bit different. You'll see in a minute, the notes are shorter. We've got two notes per bar. We've got four, four time. So each note is worth two counts, okay? Two plus two is four beats a bar. Okay, we also have a two beat rest in that in those bars. We call these minims in Australian England, in America, half notes. I quite like half notes because two halves equals a whole. So minims, half notes, whatever you call them, two counts each. Okay, so they if you have uh, four four time and I've got playing two in a bar, it goes ta ta like that, okay? In our piece, we actually have three in a row, so we got uh, two in one bar and one in the next, followed by a two beat rest. So it goes like this, ta, 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 rest, rest, and then we keep going. Okay, this tune, the notes are on the same pitch. The first note is an E, and we have to play three E's in a row, and to separate them, we don't honk each one with a new breath. We tongue them so that we have a nice smooth sound just interrupted very briefly by your tongue gently touching the reed and releasing the air to flow through again. So it's really important that the, the air pressure stays on and that we just interrupt the airflow very briefly to stop the sound. It's as if you're saying, Two, 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 and your tongue is going away from the reed. You can just try it on an E, first finger, thumb. Just try it with, just on the E, on the note E. Okay. So there I'm just moving my tongue up and down on the reed, uh, against the reed and releasing the air. It's one breath, many notes. I don't want to see uh, your jaw squeezing the reed closed because that also works, but you'll get squeaks and things happening. That's not what we want. We don't want to be biting the reed like that. Don't want that. We also don't want honking. Okay, we don't want honking. That's blowing each note separately. So it's like you're taking a breath between each note. When we talk, we don't breathe between each word we say. So think of that in music. We want big musical sentences with one breath. Okay, here we go with half the price. Again, put it on pause. Have a listen to it. 
have a read through it and then have a blow, okay? Best of luck.